What's up everyone, Dylan here. I wanted to hop on for another short and sweet analysis video. So with that said, we'll hop right into it. As I've been saying the last few videos, whether you like it or not, the bulls remain in control, okay? Uh, you could go to any, basically any time frame from what I have on my chart. If you start in August, if you start in September, if you start in October, from those months on, the bulls have had complete control where higher highs and higher lows have been formed for the most part, okay? In fact, the last six weeks have been pretty crazy, right? The S&P 500 has posted six consecutive weekly gains for only the second time since the pandemic and has seen its strongest year-to-date performance since 1997. During the last six weeks of consecutive weekly gains, ES has only put in 10 days that were red. So over the last six weeks, there's only been 10 red days, which is pretty uh, staggering, okay? Um, part of the reason as to why it's been rallying has been the strength out of mega cap names such as NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA as of today broke to all-time highs, right? Brand new all-time highs, okay? So this is certainly providing some nice inflows to the NASDAQ and ultimately the S&P as well, okay? We also have Apple. Uh, it's So it double topped at its previous resistance that was um, you know, basically established back in mid-July. Double topped there, fell there again on uh, mid in mid-October, but we're right back up to that area. So, you know, you could kind of argue like, okay, yeah, double topped, yet the double top did not produce a sustained downside move, okay? So we're basically right back up to retest that area less than a week later, okay? So uh, Apple reports earnings on uh, the 31st of October, so in, in 10 days from now. So um, it seems as though, I could be totally wrong, but it seems as though considering it's so close to that all-time high yet again, uh, it's only it's basically inevitable that it's going to break it to the upside. So if Apple and Nvidia both get or both are at all time highs, it's only going to help the overall sentiment in the overall market and, and mainly the the tech sector. Okay, so uh, I would keep an eye on that uh, all time high, which sits at two thirty seven point four nine. And if Apple can break it to the upside, it should pr uh, provide some inflows to the NASDAQ and the S&P. Okay, so like I said, Apple and NVIDIA being at all-time highs or, or very close to it um, is, is helpful to the bulls, okay? Um, so today we had a, a sharp move down in the, in the morning, and my news source uh, blamed that move on the fact that yields, the 10-year yield was uh, at its highest level since July. So I want to talk about that very quickly and kind of just tell you guys what I'll be looking at going forward. Okay, so if we look at a daily chart of TNX, which is the, just the 10-year treasury note yield, you could see, just as I just said, it is at the highest level since uh, back from July. Okay, and it's um, <clears throat> pretty contradicting that this rally started right after Powell uh, cut rates by 50 basis points. So it, it should have done the opposite, but um, that's that's a, another story for another day, okay? So uh, basically, the higher TNX goes is, is not good for stocks, and, and hence why my news source said that today's drop was um, catered to the strength in the, 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 the yields, okay? So... Why is that, right? The higher yields go with the increasing debt that we have, right? It becomes, that debt becomes more expensive to finance, right? I'm not just talking about the United States government. I'm talking about individual equity uh, companies as well, right? If you're a company that trades, you know, on the stock market or, or any, uh, you know, company for that matter, if you have high debt levels, right? And, and the yield continues to go higher and higher and higher, it's going to be much more expensive to finance that debt. And ultimately, that's going to uh, factor into the bottom line of, of earnings and valuations, okay? So um, ultimately, higher yields are not good for stocks, okay? However, the reason I'm talking about this is I want to point out uh, this piece of information. 
So yes, we are at the highest level since July, but we're technically seeing some signs of exhaustion in this move higher. So basically we have a uh, bearish negative divergence in the RSI, right? What that means is price is seeing a higher high, whereas the RSI um, is seeing a lower high, right? Technically what that means is um, despite price breaking higher, the move is lacking relative strength. So as price goes higher, the relative strength is decreasing, which could hint that the uh, the the recent rally can uh, you know reverse basically any time. Now, is the RSI 100% accurate? No, but um, I'm you know seeing signs like this are worth noting, right? TLT is the opposite, and you're seeing the same exact thing inverse, right? You're seeing a lower low in the price, whereas the uh, RSI has not taken out that previous low. So again, <clears throat> that hints that yields are probably going to pull back. Now, is the pullback going to be a sustained continuation? Who knows? But uh, it's it's worth noting that if that is the reason for today's drop in stocks in the morning, uh, and and you know TNX is likely going to kind of fade over, you know, roll over and fade back lower, that could be another bullish sign for the overall stock stock market. Um, however, I'm going to get into it more in in the end of this video, but um, that's not the only risk that the stock market is facing per se. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> I always say, um, you know, you should have a gauge in the stock market on the charts uh, for the overall stock market, whether you're looking at S&P or the NASDAQ, you should have an overall gauge on a technical standpoint, as opposed to relying on following the news. Okay, so the news is one thing, right? I could come up with 10 different bearish pieces of news, and I could come up with 10 bullish pieces of news, right? It's a lot of uh, conflicting information, okay? So that's why I rely on my technicals to kind of give me an idea of which side is in control, bulls, bears, where's the trend going, and so on and so forth. So for the very, very short-term time being, I want to keep an eye on this anchor VWAP spanning from Monday, October 7th. The reason why October 7th is because it was the last test at that critical trend or at that critical line, that support line, right? That lined up with this resistance over here, right? It was previous resistance over here. And then once it broke out, it tested that area of critical support on the retest. So that anchored VWAP spans from the last test at that critical support line. So that's the importance behind that specific line. Okay. So I want to keep an eye on that tr on this uh, anchored VWAP because in very, very simple terms, as long as the bulls continue to hold above that and defend dips above, the bulls are in control. Okay. I don't care what the RSI looks like. Not that I don't care what the RSI looks like, but um, shorts near that area are less likely to produce a sustained sell-off unless price gets below that and stays below that. So that's kind of like my line in the sand for the time being, okay? As long as uh, S&P is above that line, um, I would imagine that uh, the bulls will remain in control, okay? On top of that, that anchored VWAP also lines up with this trend line support. Okay, you could see, oh, that was drawn wrong. It's this one right here, my fault. It's this one right here. So if sp spanning from September 11th, right? And then you attach it to the low from October 7th, you could see that that anchored VWAP is lined up right with that trend line for, you know, as of this moment. So, um, which makes that anchored VWAP even more important, the fact that it has a double confluence with a key trend line that has held on two different uh, major tests, okay? So uh, that general area remains the line in the sand for very, very short term. I'm not talking two months out, three months out, I'm talking this week, okay? Um, so that's very important there, okay? So um, as like I said, as long as that stays above, bulls are in control, okay? 
But I did want to point out a few different things on um, that the Bears have going for them for the time being, okay? Going back to that relative strength, um, you know, piece of context, right? S&P has been going sideways, whereas the, the RSI has been in a downtrend, okay? Um, just like we were looking at for TNX, S&P shows very, very similar signs. So it, technically, the price of S&P has basically just been consolidating while the relative strength of the index has been declining. So in theory, that kind of implies that this rally recently might be losing some steam. Now, could that be totally wrong? And could the S&P continue on, you know, to make new highs after new highs after new highs? Of course. But you definitely want to keep an eye on pieces of context like that um, as they can be helpful in some scenarios, okay? So I read an article uh, from um, today, actually. Um, it was from Deutsche Bank, and um, someone from Deutsche Bank basically had, he listed the, the hurdles that the current rally faces at the moment. And he goes on to say, valuations, growth, geopolitics, and debt are four of the major headwinds that the S&P um, can likely face in the near future, okay? Uh, basically, so he says this, clearly the recent rally has been incredibly strong, but it's likely to run into increasing headwinds from here. As Deutsche Bank notes, the S&P 500 is on track for back-to-back -back annual gains above 20%, which is something we haven't seen since 1997 and 1998. So generating further returns on that scale appears difficult looking at history. Um, so he goes on and, 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 you know, kind of talks about more of those four different headwinds that he, that he wrote about. But, uh, you know, basically what I'm saying is um, the things can change rapidly. But like I said, for the time being, as long as S&P is above that anchored VWAP, very, very near term, bulls remain in control. Um, but don't get overly complacent is basically what I'm saying. Um, so that's it for me. Um, uh, keep an eye on those levels that I just said. NQ, this is from last week. This is why I didn't talk about it this week. But uh, NQ has that falling, falling wedge, whatever the hell you want to call it. So uh, I would definitely keep an eye on this as well. To the upside, it has that resistance uh, that's been held, holding since late August. And then to the downside, it has uh, support that has been holding since uh, early August. So that's it for me. If you guys have any questions, let me know below. Drop a like, drop a comment, whatever you got to do. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.